Hi there, I'm Tasha Bolig, the 2019 SCPGA Teacher of the Year. As we transition back to golf, and specifically back to golf instruction, it is vital that we follow the back to golf guidelines as well as implement our own safety measures. A best practice that you can encourage right now is to create your very own safety toolkit. So this is what mine looks like. I keep wipes in here. I keep hand sanitizer in here. I also keep gloves as well as my own mask. And I also keep a few disposable masks for any of the golfers that forget them. Another important part of this kit is my ability to be able to mark off sections so it's very clear on where everyone should be standing. So we can use things like painter's tape or twine, anything that we can do to communicate the social distancing measures that we are implementing. And finally, I also use some spots or I use these footprints that are terrific for children, but they're also really good for anyone just to show them where to stand. And it's very clear on where they're supposed to be. So anything that can, we can do to stay more organized, we would encourage, and this is our very own safety toolkit. We have a tremendous opportunity to showcase our great game. It's a tremendously healthy and safe outdoor activity that is great for golfers of all ages, but things might look a little different for a while. So in this video, we're gonna be demonstrating some best practices for you to take back to your golf club and implement in your individual and group lessons. Thank you very much for watching. Hey everybody, this is Randy Chang, PGA Golf Professional, Director of Instruction at Journey at Pachanga and the Randy Chang Golf Schools. If you didn't recognize me because uh, of all the covering, this is the new norm. So. Today, we'd like to show you what an individual lesson is going to look like, which again starts off with a face covering. And as you can see with all of my coaches, what I recommend is to get as much covering as possible. Uh, we use the sleeves, uh, which I know it's getting into our hot season, but these are actually coolant sleeves. Uh, I have used the, my rain gloves. Now this may be going a little overboard but right now as we're getting back into golf the main purpose is to make us look like we're really being safe out there and to have all the, the things to make our students feel comfortable as far as a face covering using a bandana handkerchief number one it doesn't fog up you get a little bit more air coming through so it's a lot more comfortable as far as using uh, face covering is concerned. You know, the main things again to understand is the safety of it. So we do most of the talking, so making sure that your face and mouth is covered is really important. But also again, to get the ventilation is definitely gonna help. So prior to the student arriving at your lesson, we have had communication through email on a list of things that now that they have to bring. Uh, prior to this, how we used to run individual lessons, we had a big table that had snacks, we had water, uh, we had sunscreen, and the student would come in and sign in uh, before the lesson. Now those things are going to be changed. Uh, there's nothing that we're going to have that we're going to be sharing. So all of this is going to be gone. So now this is my stuff. So we separate now uh, two, with two tables, one where the student comes in, in to check in, which is just hand sanitizer on that table. This will be my table that has all the things that I need. Nothing will be shared. Uh, I started off using some of these gloves, uh, these rubber gloves, but again, because of the, the heat, uh, it got very hot and very sweaty. So I've kind of gone through my uh, rain gloves here that can also be washed. So at this stage of the game, this is how we're going to be doing it. Uh, that has, again, nothing that can be shared. Uh, clubs, warm-up equipment. Now, with some of you that do have some warm-up equipment that uh, your students don't have, I know warm-up is very important. You need to very make sure that you get that sanitized uh, after the lesson uh, if you really need to have them use it. At this point, we're just not having anybody share anything. So normally, 
My students used to arrive a half an hour before uh, their lessons to warm up, uh, to maybe do a little practicing before the lesson. Unfortunately, that can't happen anymore. We tell the students that you can't arrive more than five minutes before their lesson. They've been communicated again of what they need to do with face masks and so on. So as the student starts walking in, the, the, the greetings are going to be changed, obviously. There's no touching. Put some markers down where you want them to set their clubs. They go about and hand sanitize. We do a specific greeting, which is our high five iron. Now, hold it on there. So this gives us an opportunity. This right here is six feet or maybe a little bit more. So better safe than sorry. So this gives us a good idea about how far that we need to stay apart from each other. So once we've done our greeting, and we're getting into the lesson, there are different tools that we're gonna have to use. Uh, we will reiterate the safety guidelines, which is the most important, which is the social distancing of at least six feet. Um, there will be no touching again, so making sure we, we hold our high five iron distance apart is going to be very important. So we get into the, the lesson. Prior to this, there's a lot of us that did a lot of holding and touching of the students to try to get them where you want to get them. Now that that can't happen, uh, we have gotten back used to our new tools, which I call my teaching chopsticks. So these are going to be my hands and I'll show you some of the techniques that I actually used to use before when I first started teaching uh, that are effective to get your students to do what they want to do. So as long as you're this far away, you know you are far, far enough. So beforehand, Anthony has told me some of the things that he's having trouble with. Uh, one of the things was uh, making a full turn on the backswing before I would get in there and try to show him what that is. Now, again, using my chopsticks, I can do the same thing. Go ahead and set yourself up, Anthony. So again, as long as I'm here, I want him to get a full turn on his backswing. What I'd like to do is I can use this, this club as a hook. And I can hook where he feels it runs back. And so when I say go ahead and turn, he can totally feel that now without me getting close to him. And again, and slowly going ahead and touching where he needs to be and what muscle he needs to use to make that turn. So again, using, using these type of things. Another thing would be simply uh, having his swain, a little bit of swain. So very simply, go ahead and take it back using clubs now instead of, I would physically go in there and hold his, his right knee down. Another tool that we started to use a lot more now, it's also very fun. As you can see how we set up some of our target drills using the noodle here, which is not very expensive to get at that dollar store. Uh, Anthony has uh, working with some of his path issues. Um, he sometimes gets himself too far on the inside, taking it back and stays inside, which is causing a, lo a lot of the hooks. So using the noodle again, allows us to work on his path. Go ahead and show. So Anthony, I want you to go ahead and take, a, take it back, but don't go, don't touch the noodle. And on the way down, do not touch the noodle. Go ahead and take a swing. Well done. You can use this for path, practice, as I can also see, Anthony, I want you to do this. See the noodle out in front of you. I want you to start this noodle on the left side of the noodle. So I want you to start this on the left side of the noodle and I want you to fade it back to that far blue flag. Always have some things visually, some challenges. Very good, that didn't fade but it started on that left side of the noodle. So utilize noodles. You can utilize cones, utilize your golf clubs. Uh, and you're gonna have to practice this because it's a little different. Your, your instincts wants to jump in there and start grabbing. Right, so get some practice in doing so. The other thing is you notice how Anthony kind of ranked his own ball to his spot. When he starts doing a driver, you yourself will also go ahead and just tee it up for him. So there's nothing being touched at all that has, has to share between you and your student. The last thing will be 
the video portion of it. So you'll be doing a lot more visual aspects. Go ahead and take a take a swing. Okay. Anthony, come on over here. Maintain our distance here. That was a good job, boy. High, high five. That was great. So now after you've taken the video, you can share it with a laptop screen. You can share it with a monitor. We have a monitor at, at our school, which is a lot bigger uh, under a tent that you can see. Uh, but there are very various ways that you can stay apart, communicate what you're trying to, trying to communicate to our student, again, without having to get too close. Very good, Anthony. That's a good lesson. So what we'll do from here now is I'm gonna go through a review what we need to to focus on for the next lesson in our lesson plan uh, i will give him those notes through email via email through our app those of you that have those apps we can do it that way as well uh, he will go ahead now and put his clubs and sanitize one more time as well as myself i'll go ahead and and do that and now also wipe down some of the equipment that was that I've used just again to show people that we are adhering to and being really safe. So now I'll send the review, send everything via email. Payment has also been taken care of electronically. Uh, we like to use Venmo, PayPal, uh, credit cards also can be done online. So as we're starting to get back to golf or back to lessons, Please make sure you adhere to and keep up with your county guidelines uh, as they change on a daily basis. Uh, the most important thing again is the social distancing aspect of it. I'll see the hand sanitizing practices so that we can get back and get back here to stay. You may find a lot of cool things about the changes as far as your teaching and coaching goes. Uh, so everybody, please stay safe. And let's get back and get back to stay. I hope some of this is, will help you in your daily practices, in your daily lessons. Uh, please apply them. The most important thing is keep that distance. Uh, stay up with your county guidelines as they change on a daily basis. And we hope to get back and get back to stay. Hello, my name is Josh Alpert, PGA golf professional, founder of Good Swings Happen Junior Golf Academy. We're here today to discuss how to responsibly conduct an organized educational program in a post-COVID environment. There's three aspects of this that we want to go through. The first is in the communication to the parent, and this happens well before the actual program takes place. How do we text, phone, email, and communicate with them exactly what it is that we're going to be doing with their kids? so that when they are with us, they know that we are running a responsible program. Number two is in the actual setup of the facility. Whether we're doing putting, whether we're doing short game, driving range, full swing, and or a tented area program, we want you to know that how we set our facilities up will really ensure that we can run a responsible program when your kids are here. And of course, the last aspect of this is when the instructor is with four players at one time, we want to be actually leading that program so that we are responsibly running it in a safe way, as well as making sure that those programs are educational um, and fun so that your kid is not only having a great time with us at the golf course, but they're also learning aspects so that they can become a better player. Before we go any further, we want to make it crystal clear that we will always be following city, county, and back to golf guidelines when we conduct any program where youth are involved. For example, one of the things that we will be doing differently at our summer camps, if we are allowed to do them, is we will have our table and break station set up specifically so that each kid sits in the same chair every single time. Historically, we brought lunches in for our campers, and this summer, we're gonna make it so that the parent brings water, snacks, and food, and always stays in their assigned seat so that we are always adhering to the six foot guidelines of staying safe when running a program. Communication is key. It is extremely important that parents feel comfortable dropping their kids off with us when they program. The good swings happen 
we make sure that we are sending email, text, and or phone calls to our parents so that they clearly understand that we will be providing a safe program when their kids choose to program with us. Now that pre-communication is complete, it's time to run a program. We're now here at our tented area. This serves as a creative station, our break station, and our snack and lunch station. We have set up our tables a little bit different in a post-COVID environment. We only have four players per table. Each player is safely six feet away from all other players. And we will make sure that each player is always in, a, in an assigned seat the entire time so that nobody is touching chairs, nobody is touching other equipment. We are completely able to keep them in their tented area in ways that are safe. Something that we will illustrate in our pre-communications to parents and reinforce with all of our players is the need to follow guidelines at all times. Currently, all players and all staff need to wear masks when we are programming, and we intend to follow those guidelines throughout the duration of a program. The first thing that we will do when players come to program with us is explain to them exactly the protocol so that each of the players understands their role and responsibility in keeping our program safe. Obviously, we have the chair set up here, spaced out so that the kids know to stay six feet away at all times. They will clearly understand our guidelines with respect to hand washing, using their only using their own equipment. And then when we get out into the programming phase, we're going to show them exactly how we run a program so the kids won't be running across each other when we program. Welcome to the putting green. So here we are. The kids have already checked in. They are completely clear on all of the safety guidelines that we're going to be using for the day. And it's time to play some golf. Here on the putting green, we have set up four stations, four players. Each of our players is going to participate by themselves on a skill-based station. And we make sure as a priority that everything is done with safety in mind first and foremost. That does not preclude us, though, from setting up programs where kids are going to have a great time and they're going to develop skills of golf. In this specific situation, we have a station set up where we have a mock hole, so players are going to learn how to play a hole, make decisions, and control their speed. We have specific areas set up where kids are going to make three, five, and seven foot putts. We have our my favorite station, the clock station, where we learn about break and green reading. And then we also have on the far side a, a lag station where players are going to be able to control speed. In this environment, we have four players completely spaced out with four different stations assessing different skills specific to learning how to be a better putter. And in this type of environment, we can do two things very, very well. We can be safe and responsible in our programming and kids can have fun getting better at the game of golf. You've seen how we set up our putting stations. I want to make sure you understand that our short game stations, our driving range stations, will always be set up responsibly so that safety is our number one focus and goal. That being said, this is a golf camp, and golf is a game where we're trying to have fun. So we're going to be safe, we're going to adhere to guidelines, but we're here to play the game of golf and have a great time while we do it. That's what I'm talking about! As a reminder, and in these fluid situations that we live with every day, please remember to check your local agency guidelines, the Back to Golf Lot guidelines, and other guidelines that we have posted on scpga.com. Good luck to you all, be safe, and be responsible.